Last time on CRG, we set up our Mega CD32 with a CF card with Xbench on it, making this Wii console probably the best way to enjoy the classic Amiga games library on the big TV. But there is one question remaining. How do we connect our CD32, or for that matter, any mid-90s retro console to a modern display that will, in all likelihood, only have HDMI inputs. There are professional solutions out there, such as the FrameMeister, or even the OSSC, Open Source Scan Converter. But with those coming in with a price tag of £300 and £150 respectively, well, at that, they will put off most casual retro gamers. This little device here though, costs only £20. So today in CRG, we're going to take a closer look at this. I'm going to show you some of its features. We're going to hook it up to the capture device to get a closer look at the video quality it produces. The CD32 is playing the Nine Fingers demo through this through my AV amp onto the TV and uh, it looks pretty good to me so let's take a closer look at what you get for £20 okay so we'll leave Road Avenger looping in the background there and we'll just take a closer look at this device itself so this is it, our HD video converter, SCART HDMI to HDMI 720p or 1080p. The bottom of it doesn't tell us very much other than confirming this is made in China. There's no manufacturer's mark or anything on it. It is a very generic looking piece of kit. On the back of the device we have our HDMI input for pass through. We've got our SCART input and our 5 volt DC. It comes with its uh, power supply. Turning to the front then we have our power LED. Our HDMI output. You also get 3.5mm audio jack and digital coaxial out. This button here, SCART HDMI, switches between the SCART input or the HDMI pass through. This button switches between 720p or 1080p and actually a few other modes that I'll show you in a minute. And then this button just switches between 50 or 60 hertz output. So, this bit here. So if we look at the TV, if you press it once it confirms that we're playing at 1080p at 50 hertz. If you press it again you'd expect it to change to 720p. But no, it actually changes to 800 by 600 at 60 hertz. And in these computer resolutions, if you would, we cannot change between 50 and 60 hertz. So, we get that. Pushing this button again, it now goes to 1024 by 768. One more time, takes us up to 1280 by 1024. Then we finally get the 720p. And you'll see it's back to 50 hertz now. So we can now switch between PAL and NTSC. Changing our output to 60 hertz. And then one more time, we'll take us back to where we started. And that's 1080p. 60 hertz, I'm going to change it back to 50. Just because this is a PAL console, this is a PAL TV, I'm going to leave it at 50 hertz. Now, one thing this little box gets a fair bit of stick for online is the fact that some claim it cuts off the side of the image. In fact, looking at this here, it does look like it has trimmed this ever so slightly. Actually, just let me uh, quit out of Road Avenger and load a different game. This shows this off a bit better. So we're loading Golden Axe here. 
and this will show you quite clearly you can see here the D unlimited has been cut off now when the Sega logo appears here you can see the side of it is also missing and that's one reason that people give this wee box a lot of stick online saying it's ruining the image but it's not a fault of the converter it's your TV and let me show you what I mean if we go into the menu of the screen we're into our picture menu and we're looking for advanced settings and then this one here is what we're after overscan and we want to turn that off so now if we go out of this you can see that the full of the Sega logo has now appeared There we are, we can see it clearly now. We now have a full image on the screen. So, as I said, it's not a fault of this. It's the settings on your TV. Right, next thing to do is we're gonna hook this up to our capture device on the PC, just to take a closer look at the video quality it's outputting. And we're gonna compare it against native composite and native S video out of the CD32. Okay, so we have the CD32 connected up and I'm gonna show you composite, S-video and RGB HDMI. We're running the Enigma demo from 1991 and the audio that you're hearing was captured through the HDMI device. So the first thing that stands out straight away there is just how poor the composite video signal actually is. The text that you can see there is quite blurry and it's hard to read. S video though actually does a pretty decent job of it. And then the RGB to HDMI adapter just takes it that wee bit higher. I think the color of the blue just stands out a wee bit more on that and the quality of the text is just slightly sharper. Right, let's just pause the video playback here for a second and we'll zoom in on each of the three images just to give you a closer look at it. So back to the demo then. This section here, if we just pause it again quickly, you can see that the text scroll along the bottom is very hard to make out on composite and S video, but over the RGB to HDMI device, it's crystal clear. You can also see the blue box around the star field on both composite and S video is a bit blurry, especially on composite actually, but again on RGB to the HDMI device, it's a nice, neat, crystal clear image. So we'll let the demo just play for another minute or so here, just to give you a feel for the picture quality. And then we're going to test to see if there's any lag introduced by the RGB to HDMI converter.
Right, so what we're going to do next is test for lag on the input generated by this RGB to HDMI converter. But we need a baseline first, so we have the CD32 hooked up here over S-Video. And with thanks to Dan over on the EAB forums, he has uh, wrote us this little program, Color Changing. So every time we click the button on the joypad, it will change the color from blue to red, and vice versa. So as you can see, that's pretty instantaneous on S video. But just to put it to the test, I'm going to single out one of those clicks, just like this. And we're going to slow it down so that one frame equals one second. So that's the button press, and I count approximately 9 to 10 seconds in between the initial button press and when the screen colour has changed to the solid red. Right, let's switch over to the HDMI and try that again. Right, so this time we are connected over HDMI, a nice clear screen for Workbench. So let's load up our colour changing program again. And as you can see here, it does seem pretty instantaneous the way it was with S-Video. But same as last time, we're going to take one of those color changing clicks and we're going to slow it down so that one second equals one frame. And this time then, I'm counting about 11 and a half seconds in between the initial click and when the screen color changes the red. So comparing that to last time where it was around nine and a half seconds, that's about two seconds of lag in there or two frames of lag. So for me, I don't think that's noticeable. In fact, I would put that into the margin of error for doing a test like this. And I think we can fairly safely say the SCART RGB to HDMI cheap converter is pretty much lag free. Well there we are, our cheap SCART RGB to HDMI converter. What's the final verdict? Would I recommend it? Sort of, if I'm being honest. If you're only going to be using your Amiga or your retro consoles for gaming, then, yeah, absolutely, go for it. It produces a pretty good image on the big TV. There is some minor artifacting, and I would probably put it in line with the likes of the GBS 8200 scan doubler. This thing, though, is just handier to use because it's in a complete package, and you get the power supply with it. It's just plug and play, and away you go. If however you're using your Amiga for desktop publishing or any sort of real computer work like that, I would probably stay away from this because the artifacting on screen, well, I would say it would uh, do your head in eventually. But for gaming only, it definitely is a good wee device that's worth looking at for the £20 that it costs. Now, if only it was that simple. And I need to finish this video just with a word of caution. This one here is actually my second converter. The first one I had only lasted for a few hours before it died. This one though has been going for a couple of weeks now and it is going strong. It has not given me any issues. So possibly I was just unlucky with the first one I had. But if you are looking to get one of these, I would maybe recommend buying it from somewhere that you can easily return it to. I got mine from Amazon through their Prime service, so I could just return the broken one free of charge, no hassle, and get this one here, and it's been working fine since. I'm possibly just being a little overcautious with that, but I thought I'd put it out there. Just bear in mind that uh, they're maybe not the best put together bit of kit. But when they do work, they work really well. 
Right, that's it for this video guys. If you enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up as it really helps the channel. Please consider subscribing. Check out some of my other videos if you've got time. And I'll see you next week.